what really keeps me going with this is that during COVID, my first grandchild was born. I have a long history of ill health in my family. My father had MS. I've had many family members die from cancer, from diabetes. I was not dealt a clean deck of cards. And it is really important to me that I take care of my health. I want to maintain my level of health. That grandchild of mine, it's really important to me that I maintain a strong presence in her life. I don't want to be the one that's sitting at home waiting for everybody to get home. I want to help my children's and my grandchildren's path. I want to be part of a positive change for them. I really just want to make a difference. Okay, welcome everybody. Today we have Robin Schweitzer. Is that he's Schweitzer or Switzer? How do you say it? Switzer. Switzer, I'm sorry. Because Robin Switzer with, with keto cut. I'm not, <laughs> and I've, I've met you a couple of times now, Robin, over the years as I've been. <laughs> <laughs> been out there at, at KetoCon a few times, but I, I've really never, I've never had a chance to talk to you much because you're so busy, you know, you're in there running the whole show and it's, you know, I'm sure yeah. you don't have more than three seconds to yourself. So anyway, well, welcome and thanks for, uh, uh, for doing this. So I guess I'll just give you a moment to maybe just kind of introduce yourself, let us know about your background and, and we can chat about whatever you want to chat about. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me and um, hi, everybody. Yeah, the, the three times that I've met you, we basically said hello and right. like, <laughs> rushed shoulders or even barely that. And then there was a crowd of people following you. So I really didn't get a chance to talk to you. Plus I'm really short and I'm easy to miss. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm only five, four. And um, so other people at these conferences tower over me. Well, so, I mean, five, anyway. five, five, five is the average female height. So you're not that short. I mean, you're pretty much right. It seems here. like I'm shorter than everybody when we go to KetoCon. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but well, maybe, maybe carnivores maybe, are tall. That's right. It must be. That's right. I was only five foot six until I started carnivore a few years ago, and then I sprouted up, and now I'm six foot. <laughs> so that's clearly what has happened for me. But no, just kidding. Well, tell us about your. How'd you get into that? I mean, what, what is your, what is your background? Because I, I don't even know. I mean, how did you start get into this whole sure. diet, keto, all that stuff? How did that evolve for you? Well, um, I spent the first forty years of my life. Well, not forty. Let's say. 35, maybe, of just fighting with symptoms of hormonal dysre dysregulation. And um, I was overweight. Um, it was always 10, 20. As I got older, it got the more the overweight got bigger and bigger, more and more weight. And then um, when I was in my 40s, it kind of got out, well, it got out of control. And the result of living uh following the standard American diet and in and out of every diet program you can possibly imagine was really taking its toll on me. So my weight went up and down many times. And at my highest, I was about 200 pounds. Wow. And um, I was pregnant, but still, I mean, I even gained a huge amount of weight when I was pregnant. My first child was 10 pounds. My second one was nine and a half. It, it was just always a problem for me. And I discovered low carb back in the Atkins days and did really well on it, but uh, not well enough to convince me to make it a lifestyle. And of course, I had no support whatsoever at, in those days. But I did find some success with it. And I eventually gravitated back to it. And over the years, I kept on going back to it. And I always thought that I was like a pretty smart cookie. You know, I always thought that i was quick to adapt. But the truth of the matter is, is I had to like fail, fall on my face many times before I finally was convinced that this was a proper way for me to eat. So in uh, when I was, by the time I turned 50 years old, I had been um, following the carnivore diet and the keto, uh, being following relatively a ketogenic diet for a while. And um, I stumbled across a few Facebook groups and uh, they were mainly zero carb <clears throat> and um, keto food groups. And so I joined them. And at the time, I was working for Bank of America as a uh, global sales manager. And I had been working for the bank for a long time. And I had always been looking for a way to get out. I had this passion for health and wellness. It was more like an obsession. 
And uh, I wanted to find a way to use the skills and tools that I had developed over my career to translate into something that I had some passion for. And when I was in one of those Facebook groups, I saw a, a post for um, someone looking for a project manager. And, and at that time, the name of the group was Keto Evangelist. Mm -hmm. And um, Brian Williamson was the owner of that. And I answered the ad, not, I had no idea what a project manager was. And uh, I didn't know if I had the skills to do it, but I was so curious because the people in this group were so passionate about what they were doing. Uh, I really wanted to learn more. So Brian and I got on the phone. Uh, we hit it off really well. And about 30 days later, I quit my job at Bank of America wow. um, and decided to join Brian in this quest for building out this uh, ketogenic platform. And there was no promise for compensation. So I like looking back on it, I'm not very smart. I just like winged it. Uh, but my, my children were grown out of the house, self-sufficient, and I was in a position where I could take the risk. So um, I joined Brian in 2016, late 2016, and we started planning the first KetoCon, um, which we did in 2017. It was a huge success. Uh, and then every year it just built on itself. And by 2019, we had a really large of 3000 people there. And this, at the same time, we're building out other platforms. And I'm also privileged in that now through doing all these events, I meet people like Dr. Baker and other experts in this field. And I'm learning more and more and more. And it was much easier, of course, for me to stay stay with the program because now I'm getting healthier. I'm feeling better. I'm seeing the results and I understand the science behind it at the same time. So then 2020 happened and KetoCon 2020 had to be rescheduled. And Brian came to me and said, we are bleeding faster than we, than we've got money coming in. It's all going out. Um, I can't sustain this. I'm going to have to shut everything down. And I wasn't ready to quit. So I got a lawyer and we put together an acquisition agreement and I acquired everything from Brian. He went back to work and I started living on my 401k for a while, just rebuilding this platform out. And we did the next KetoCon in, we did KetoCon 2020 online. We couldn't do 2021, obviously. And then we did 2022. And now here we are again uh, for KetoCon 2023. The event is uh, transforming by itself. So we we launched this event as a platform to that was dedicated solely to the ketogenic diet and lifestyle. And now we have just morphed into a health optimization event. So I think that a lot of people that follow the ketogenic diet eventually, depending on their their reasons for coming into this space and for their love that where they are in their health journey. I think a lot of people end up following a much more simple protocol like carnivore or uh, meat-based diets where they continue to eliminate foods. That's been happening to the event. If you look at the speaker, the lineup of speakers and the topics and sessions, it, there's a lot of carnivore conversation happening this year. And then if you look at who all the vendors are um, and the exhibitors, those companies have changed there's a few companies that cater to the carnivore crowd, but um, I would say more than not, they are companies that offer tools and platforms for health optimization. So supplements, if you use supplements, um, fitness equipment, software, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> well, interesting. How, you know, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I can imagine you start at the beginning. There's no, like you said, no guarantee for any income at all. You, you could fall on your face. Um, I'm sure it had to be. I mean, why why Austin, Texas? By the way, I didn't mind. And I love Austin, Texas. I love. I went to college there. I, you know, I love the barbecue places. But how did you guys decide on <laughs> how did you decide on Austin as as a venue? Because it's been there every year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it so. has been there. It has been there every year. Brian's from Austin. I see. Okay, that's why uh, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and um, I've thought about moving the event down to Florida, but uh, I feel like the event is known as an Austin event now. And it's a great city for, for something like this. It's a great place to go for a few days where there's lots to offer. It's a great, uh, friendly, like a walking friendly city. And there's lots to do there. And so 
for now we're keeping it in, in Austin. Yeah, you can really walk across the street to get some world class barbecue at Terry Black's, you know, at the Crescent right. the Palmer Adventure. I don't know if I told you, but when I first was invited to KetoCon, the last time I had been in that building, I did like a, an exhibition boxing match. I was in there actually boxing in a boxing ring <laughs> when, I was, <laughs> when I was in college. It was kind of a funny, kind of crazy fight night thing that I had done. That was the last time I had been in that, that building. And then the next time I go to present as a KetoCon, <laughs> so, it's, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let me ask you, you know, you and, and that is, you know, my experience too. You know, I, I didn't start out carnivore. I started out keto too. And then I ended up, you know, being one of the, you know, big advocates for carnivore diet. And I've seen just a, a gradual shift in going from where keto used to be, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of meat, a lot of fat and a lot of salad. And now that's kind of shifted more towards more and more meat, maybe less salad, you know, and the fat kind of content is, is, is up and down depending on who you talk to. There's been more of a protein centric yeah. of, of approach by some, not everybody. A lot of people still are very much in favor of the high fat stuff because they feel like it works better for them. Um, what, you know, you know, what major shifts have you seen? The same thing have I seen, or have you seen some other things that have happened over the years? I think it's a shame that diet has become a religion mm -hmm. and a, a, for a reason for people to argue, but in answer to your question, people like to like stick their pole in the sand and this is who I am and this is what I do. I have seen changes, like you've said. And I, honestly, I think that the, that the answer is individual. And I have seen, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media making fun of people who eat a lot of fat and they call them butter chuggers and, and other ridiculous things. But I'll have to say that I have seen a lot of people come into this space that were very, very unhealthy and ill. And they recovered because they focused on keeping their fat content high that regulate, helped regulate their insulin. So I, I do think that there's a place for it. I think the reason we're starting to see change is because the people who were so ill have be started to become more healthy and they can make those changes to their protocols. And then there's some other people that are like adamant about high protein and low fat. Uh, I really think it's dependent on the person. I don't do well like that. If I have too, if I have my proteins too high and my fat is too low, my insulin goes too high. It, I, it definitely is different for every person. And I think that where they are in their journey impacts what they, what, how they'll find success where they are in their health journey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I've seen the same thing. And I, you know, like I said, I know there's a, I know there's a, for some of you are familiar with the guy, the diet doctor, which Andreas Einfeld, yeah. Einfeld from Sweden has run for many years successfully. And it's been a ketogenic platform for many, many years. And they're making a shift to this uh, more satiety, protein fiber focused diet. And a lot of people are like mad about it. And, you know, it's just like mm -hmm. an evolution. And in my opinion, as you know, if it works, it works for some people. It'll probably work for some. It won't work for others. And what I've seen is, you know, a lot of people initially, they, they do really well in high fat. It, it, you know, they, they, you know, for whatever reason, it makes them feel better. Uh, and then some of them end up trans transitioning, like you said, to maybe a more protein focused approach as you start training as you start lifting weights. Like I eat a lot of protein, but I lift a lot of weights. I'm in there heavy. Right. So I'm putting, I'm, you know, I'm utilizing that. Whereas where if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't need near as much protein. I mean, this is, this doesn't make sense for me to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, there definitely is that, that sort of shift. And, and I think, it, you know, even within an individual over time, as their, as their health requirement, their health and changes as, as their goals change, then the diet can shift along with that. So I, I don't get into, you'll never hear me saying this is always right or this is never right. I'm always more, you know, it there's a lot of depends. It sounds kind of wishy-washy and political, but it's honestly true because it does depend on the individual. KetoCon, you know, it's two, three, it was about three days every April, or I guess it, I, it was, I think it was in July one year or something like that, but three days a year, basically what's going on the rest of the time. I mean, is it how much time goes into preparing this thing? How much, you know, I'm sure there's a lot that goes into before it happens and a little bit afterwards, but I mean, what's the rest of the year look like for you? Um, it takes a year to put, produce this event. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It takes Goodness. all year. And that's mainly because this business is not very profitable. So it's really me and two other people. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if we had a whole team of people, we could probably do this two times a year, but we just haven't reached that tipping point yet. I have a platform called Certified Ketogenic where I work with food product manufacturers to kind of help influence the fake food stuff. 
that never really took off, although I, I, it's still an operation. I also have a ketogenic lifestyle coaching with it's a group of coaches that work with individuals one-on-one. And I have a uh, product called Ballistic Keto, which is a, an MCT oil powder that's used for cooking and baking and so forth. And for the most part, it's KetoCon. I'm doing that 90% of my time is KetoCon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, obviously... I mean, I imagine the first few times is pretty challenging. And then you kind of, after you've done it a few times, you kind of know what to expect. I mean, I mean, is, is, is he, is a contract with the Palmer Center like pretty, you know, is, do they reserve that time for you every year now or do you have to fight for it or how does that work? No, they are so busy there and under such high demand. I have to fight for dates every year. Um, that's why we've had the event in July. We've had it at the end of August. We've had it in June. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were lucky enough to get the April dates for 2023 simply because Paleo FX was also held there and Paleo FX went out of business. So I was able to get their dates. Otherwise, I would have been stuck with a July date again. And for next year, I, I'm trying to get um, a better date, but right now we're at the end of May. So yeah, the Palmer Event Center is it's a great place to host an event and the devil, you know, is better than the devil. You don't. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy process. Contracting with any venue like that is not an easy process. Charlie asked if any, if we had any fake meat vendors trying to sign up. No, (laughs) they don't. Uh, But I have to tell you that I have turned away so many companies. The, the keto junk food out there is just, obscene the amount of crap that's out there and i have been contacted by general mills and several others that just make keto junk food and they think because it's a keto event that we'll let them in but i have a banned ingredient list and none of them qualify to come i've turned away i maybe that's why our rent's not that profitable because i keep turning those companies away they're the ones that have all the money um, I didn't realize that. And, and first of all, kudos for you for doing that, because that's one of the things I said, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's if it's keto, paleo, vegan, whatever. If it's cake, it's still cake or a cookie. It's still a cookie, right. it's still garbage. What 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 are your banned ingredients? I didn't know. I'd, I'd love to hear what you what you think is not appropriate. Well, it's a long list. So um, we don't let in any fake meat or fake proteins. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't let any fake fats or seed oils. We don't let in maltodextrin or any of those sweeteners along those lists, you know, fiber sweeteners along those lines. Um, We don't let in any grains. I mean, the list goes on. It's a long list. Wow, so it's easier to tell you what we do let in. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll see. I mean, I, mean, I think I think it was last year. Was, was there last year? I think, yeah, I was there last I think it was certified Piedmontese was there. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, were they, were those guys there? They were. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They were so, there. Yeah, yeah, so I was talking with, uh, uh, not Shane, I'm sorry, uh, Joe, Joe Finnegan was out there cooking up a bunch of New York mm-hmm. strips over there. And uh, I sat there all day, man. I sat there, I literally sat at their booth and just ate their meal. <laughs> well, um, this year, uh, they are not coming back this year. I think we, uh, we ate too much steak. Could be. But, um, it might have been me, my fault. I blame it. Sorry. <laughs> I was there too. So it might have been both of us. So there's a company coming this year called Holy Cow Beef, Holy Cow Farms. Mm. And they are a local farm yeah. um, just outside of Austin. And they will have a booth at KetoCon this year. And they're going to be serving lamb sliders. Um, carnivore snacks will also be there. Yeah, the okay. carnivore bar will be there. Good, good. Um, and similar companies like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah I know. I know Sylvia. Good. Sylvia is with carnivore snacks and Philip Meese uh-huh. with carnivore bar. And I believe, and I met the ranchers that do Holy Cow when I was at the Bitcoin, Bitcoin park doing a presentation. They were there. So I, I know all those guys. So good. I'll be good to see them again. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun that the Holy Cow is actually sponsoring the VIP dinner. So mm-hmm. they're providing all the beef for the VIP dinner too, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and we're doing a regenerative agriculture panel this year. Oh, nice. Awesome. So a lot of the people that you just mentioned are going to be on that panel in addition to several more. Um, have you talked to the guys from uh, the Meat Mafia podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Brent and uh, I forget. Harry. Harry and Brent. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. met them in San Diego and I've done done their podcast and I've, done, I've had Brent on mine for his ulcerative colitis thing. Yeah, so those mm-hmm. guys are good guys. Yeah, I think, yeah, they had asked me about doing something out you know like a like a little podcast with them while i'm in austin and so i've got 
It's kind of funny. I've already got like six people wanting me to do stuff in Austin. When I'm there. <laughs> like I, I've only got so much time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're moderating that panel actually, and yeah. they will have a booth as well. So yeah, there's um, a, a lot of carnivore focused things happening at the event. We have a carnivore panel that you'll be speaking on. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing a smaller panel um, for women, a carnivore for women panel where we can talk about hormonal health and, and such. Gosh, there's just all, there's so much happening at the event related to carnivore. If I could have rebranded this year, I would have, but I will be rebranding next year. So uh -oh. KetoCon uh -oh. will be, will have a different name next year because I think that I have um, boxed myself into a corner kind of because people think that the event, still think that the event is only focused on the ketogenic diet. I see. And as much as I market and as much as I try to spread the word that it just hasn't gotten through. So right now we've changed our tagline to hack your health. And then um, next year we'll rebrand a little bit further. So, but I'm just afraid to lose the search engine optimization and all the marketing that we've done with the KetoCon brand over the years. So right. yeah. I'm not a marketing expert. I'm just trying to find the right way to do it where we can continue building the same brand awareness without losing the SEO. So it's yeah. a fine line to walk. Let me, uh, let me ask you about, you know, you'd said, uh, you know, you said a fish first one, 2017, I believe you said. So, you know, it's, it's, I think it was growing and then obviously this COVID-19 pandemic shut everything down. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I know, I know, I, I think part of that had to do with why paleo effects went under just some of that, some other things, but do you, I mean, do you know what the, I mean, it, so we're, we're in March, so it's next month. So you have some idea what the attendance is going to be like. Are you back on a trajectory, an upward tra trajectory again? Or where are you guys at? Yeah, we are. Um, I'm expecting about 2000 people mm -hmm. based on the, the the um pace of the ticket sales so far we'll probably have about 2000 people there in 2017 we had 400 people in 2018 we had about a thousand people and then in 2019 we had close to 3000 people okay and originally i thought we would get back there this year but that hasn't panned out so i'm expecting to get close to 2000 okay. this year yeah we'll see and like i said Obviously, there's still some of that pandemic stuff, and a lot of people got comfortable with Zoom, like Zoom meetings, like I have, and and that type of stuff. And so, but you know, it's I, I like you know as much as traveling can be a bit of a hassle. It's always fun to be able to, at a live event and seeing people and interacting and shaking people's hands, and you know, that, yeah. I, I really, I truly enjoy that part of it. So, I'm thank, thanks for putting that on. By the way, it's really, uh, I know it's got to be a tremendous amount of work. Do you ever? I mean, do you have fun? I mean, is it fun for you, or are you just is it all this work? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that three days is a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, if it wasn't, I would, I wouldn't be silly enough to like commit to doing it again. It, it is fun. Um, I, I'm, I'm good at like putting people together. I'm good at organizing. So I'm not the, I'm not the best person on stage. I'm not the best speaker, but I am good at this. And you know, what really keeps me going with this is that I mean, during COVID, my first grandchild was born and I have a long history of ill health in my family. My father had MS. My, I've had many family members die from cancer. I've had many family members die from diabetes. I, mean, I was not dealt a clean deck of cards and it is really important to me that I take care of my health. So I know what my, what I'm predisposed to, and I don't want to go there. I just turned 60. Well, actually I'm going to be 61 this summer. So I want to maintain my level of health for the next 20, 30 years. I don't want to become decrepit. And that grandchild of mine, it's really important to me that I maintain a strong presence in her life. I don't want to be the one that's sitting at home waiting for everybody to get home. So for me, this is a, this is important for, so that I can stay connected to it. But also I want to help my children's and my grandchildren's path. I want to be part of a positive change for them. And I feel like this is a way for me to do it. It's kind of like at this point in my life, 
I've been through financial ups and downs. I really just want to make a difference. And I feel like this is my way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can, I can certainly relate, you know, it's like I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit younger. I'm 56 and, you know, I'm kind of like thinking about what do you leave for the rest of the, you know, your kids and your grandkids. And so I don't have, I, I still, I'm still with a young kid situation. You know, my youngest is 10 and my oldest is, is about to turn 17, but I, uh, you know, so I think about what, you know, what's, what do we leave for these guys? And, you know, if you look at the way society's heading, uh, for, for a lot of reasons, but particularly the nutrition out there, and it is not going in a good direction. And no. I mean, we have, we have kids these days have never not, they've not known one day of health in their whole life. I mean, they started out as obese little toddlers and, you know, and, and sick kids. And by the time they're 16 years old, they're type two diabetics. I mean, it's just, it's insane that, that, that that's happening now and we've got to do something. And so, uh, it's it's important, and it's you know like as as we see, you know, you're not going to expect these corporations to do it. You're not going to the government's not going to do it, and so we have to do it for ourselves. And thank yeah. goodness for people like yourself and others that are willing to get out there and uh, you know just do things like this. These events are very important. A lot of people and I and I Lark, I saw your comment. I'll be excited to finally meet you in person. Right, Lark Lark is joining us from Australia. I think I think you're in Australia. Yeah. She's <laughs> she's always she's always, she's she shows up here at like three o'clock in the morning on Australia time when I'm at nine AM when I normally am. I'm always amazed. I'm like, what are you doing up at three o'clock in the morning? But but uh yeah so it's so it's good. Have you um so I mean it, so Brian is completely so he's he's done with it. Brian Williams he's he's no longer a part of the deal. I know Danny Vega yeah. was kind of he was kind of involved in a part. Is he, is he sort of out of the picture too, or is he come? Because sometimes he comes. To um, yeah, Danny's speaking again this year. Okay, I mean, he's okay. a good friend of mine, but okay. he's not part of the like the management of the no, event. No, no. okay, because he's in Florida too. I think he's uh huh. He's in, same... in Tampa, about yeah. thirty minutes from me. Okay, yeah, I spent. I was in uh, not well. I guess the year before, I, I spent uh, uh, a week on. Uh, Oh, well, near, near Clearwater. I can't remember the name of the little town it was in, but it was one of the beaches. You know, there's that strip of beaches along there. And um, anyway, so it's, it's, it's a pretty area. That's, you know, St. Pete is a nice, definitely a nice, nice place. Um, I guess you're going to re- you're going to reveal the new name probably at a later date. I don't want to put you on the spot for that. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I haven't decided with the new oh, You haven't decided. Well, there you go. Well, then, no, we don't know it yet. We don't know it yet. So we got to figure, figure something out that makes sense. It kind of. I'm know. overly transparent. The answer is I don't know yet. You don't even know yet. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have to have a, maybe we'll have a vote there. So um, <laughs> what would you say is the hardest part about this event planning? I mean, yeah, there, 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 are there, is there still a lot of unknowns or, I mean, you just kind of, you know, you never know what you're going to get type of thing or how, what, what gives you the most heartburn about this stuff? Thanks. What gives me the most angst? There's always the anticipation that something's going to go wrong and something always does. There's always people that cancel at the last minute, which causes me some anxiety, but I've learned how to deal with all of that. I think that most of the angst for me at this point is my own concerns that people enjoy the experience so that I'm continuing to improve the event so that the 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 um the sponsors and the exhibitors have a good experience so the speakers feel supported and a, a lot goes into that planning so i think that's probably what gives me the most angst is just worrying about the experience that i'm delivering whether it will be considered successful or not i mean i assume you've got to generate enough income to cover the expenses i mean is there ever like a threshold where like if I don't hit this number, then we're going to lose money and be in the red and, and then we can't do it again. You know, I mean, is there, I mean, how, how worried are you about that? Well, last year, that was, that was my biggest concern. Last year, we had rolled over all of the ticket holders and these exhibitors and sponsors from 2020. Um, that money was paid to Keto Evangelist, not to me. So I felt like, because my name was all over this, I was the organizer of this event. I did not control the finances. I felt that it, that I had to honor those investments in the event. So in order to do that, I expanded the footprint of the event so that we could sell additional space and cover the cost. But that didn't happen. So I personally financed what it took to make the event happen last year. This year, we're in a much better position. Everybody that's coming this year has paid to be there. So we'll be able to pay the, we'll be able to pay the bills. There's always that concern, but 
my goal is for us to generate enough revenue so that we are already funded to start the process for the following year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. And what goes, I mean, obviously securing the venue, you know, getting, you know, getting vendors to come, you know, I mean, what, what else goes into making a big event like this? Mm. Volunteers, organizing volunteers, I imagine. Yeah. The venue is one thing, the venue for the VIP dinner, the caterer for the VIP dinner, purchasing all the lanyards and the swag bags, uh, coordinating the volunteers, building out the floor plan, in event insurance, <laughs> buying shirts. <laughs> uh, my largest expense is our AV team. So we have an AV team that comes in from Colorado that does all the staging and brings in all the lights and recording and equipment for the keynote stage and the breakout rooms upstairs. That's our largest expense. And then we also work with a third party called Cvent that manages, that provides the software for the ticket sales the exhibitor management and the speaker resource center and all of that on one platform. That's a large expense for us as well, as is the event app. There's, there's a lot of things that go into it. I, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of stuff that goes into it. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Just cause I, like I said, it's, and it's just you, you two, basically two or three people that, that mostly do most two of other people. Yeah. Wow. Um, my son does all the exhibitor sales. His name is Ryan and we work together. Um, to, to kind of uh, collaborate on all this stuff. And then um, I have a third person, Rekka, who uh, does all of the um, design, graphic design work and website development and coding for any customized stuff that we do. Yeah, interesting. And then the volunteers, how do you get, I mean, because they're just volunteering, how do you, I mean, can you, I mean, you, I guess you never know what you're going to get. I mean, how many volunteers do you typically have or how many do you think you need? And do you, do you kind of have trouble filling those out? We do have trouble. Um, uh, we'll, we Right now we have about 40 volunteers for the event this year. And the first two years we did it, we just had a sign up form, but about 50% of the people who didn't have any skin in the game didn't show up. So now we charge a, a $50 registration fee for volunteers. For that, they work for eight hours during the course of the three days. They get, they get access to like a uh, volunteer break room where we provide all refreshments and stuff like that. They also get a VIP swag bag and a shirt and some other commemorative kind of stuff. And then they get a package that includes all of the recorded presentations after the event is over. And that seems to work really well. Part of the application process for volunteers asks questions to kind of help qualify who will make a good volunteer and who won't. And we still have people who, you know, sign up to volunteer and don't show up. Have you had any kind of like weird stuff happen like when you're there, like any kind of weird, like, you know, I don't know, somebody getting a fight or somebody having a heart attack or any, any kind of crazy stuff that's happened in the, in the, in the several years that you've done this? <laughs> we've never had anybody get sick at the event. Thank God. Um, and we've never had any fights. Um, however, last year, it was 2019. I don't know who this woman is and hopefully she's not part of this group. She showed up dressed in a Wonder Woman costume. And that was her that was her thing. And she was the most bizarre person I've ever met in my life. And she wore that Wonder Woman costume the entire three days. And I don't even remember her name, but that was probably the craziest thing that ever happened. I mean, it's never been anything serious. <laughs> Uh, but there's always a little bit of weird in Austin. Well, yeah, so that's the tagline. Keep Austin weird, right? I mean, right. It's, it's one of those things. There, and it, it applies. <laughs> there's always a little bit of weird there. Well, maybe, she, maybe she really was Wonder Woman. She, somebody shoots some bullets at her and see if she could block them with her bracelets or whatever. She'd walk around with a lasso. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Interesting. Interesting. Does Austin seem to, you know, I don't know how much, who you even deal with to rent, to rent the, the event center. Is it downtown city of Austin? Um, do they, are they, do you think they feel support? They, are they supportive of this event or do you feel like they're just kind of, yeah. you know, as long as you pay. They're supportive, them, they're supportive of any event as long as you're paying for the venue mm -hmm. to use the venue. Yeah. yeah. They have a contracted caterer that we have to use. It's a union situation. And that has been a challenge because they have, they have the right to be in the concession area. They've needed a lot of education on what they can and can not offer. 
I, I'm actually still going round and round with them right now about what they can offer for lunch. That's really been the only challenge with with the venue um, is that caterer. Yeah, true. the other thing that's that the health department in Austin gets in, gets involved in every single uh, event where there's food samples being offered. So for any um, vendor or any um, exhibitor or sponsor that is offering any type of food samples, I have to get a health permit for each one of them. And there's a lot of, you know, hurdles for them, um, paperwork they have to fill out and special hand washing stations and all this kind of stuff that they have to have in their booth. And the health department comes in, like they come in unannounced to the event they go through and audit everybody's booth, anybody who is serving food samples. And if you're not, if you don't have a hand washing station, if your health permit is not properly displayed, they will shut you down, period. They, those people are really difficult to deal with because my instinct tells me that they don't have any type of authority or power anywhere else in their life. So they really hammer down on the people at these events. So that's a challenge, but we and we only had a few people shut down last year. <laughs> okay, so there's like maybe not enough hand washing stations or wrong temp. I know because right. the food has to be a certain temperature if it's cooked, and you know there's all kinds of different different regulations for you know serving food. I guess that's it. Well, that makes I guess but why you know said you don't. It doesn't look good when you have people getting sick at your event, right? So I mean, right. that's 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 also a good thing, I suppose. You know, as far as the, how you put together the panels is there is it just kind of what you know is there like a theme you know is there like like some i went to uh uh i presented at low carb denver a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and the theme was the you know the, the future of nutrition you know that was what the theme was and i don't think anybody actually talked about it. i kind of did but no i don't i don't remember anybody else talking about it, it was like that's right. the theme and i don't know if anybody actually paid attention to that but do you have themes from from year to year or is it just kind of whatever not this year. We definitely don't. I mean, optimizing your health is really the theme this year. And it's a little bit too broad, but that's kind of where we are. Yeah. The event is definitely in transition. I, you know, in the past, the event was the science and stories of keto. That was our tagline this year. It's hack your health. The way that, the way that I choose, the way that I plan out these panels, the way that I determine which speakers uh, we invite to attend is really based on what I see as uh, what's happening in the space during the year. And, you know, I'm watching people to see what kind of information they're bringing to the community, what type of research they're doing, who's writing books, keto carn. <laughs> That's a good one, Charlie, <laughs> keto carn. It's definitely, it's kind of like putting together a Rubik's cube, to be honest with you. I start by figuring, determining who we want to bring into the event. And then I start putting the puzzle together on who's going to speak on what stage at what hour. That gives me a lot of anxiety, actually, making sure that we don't have, you know, people who are bringing the same type of information or people who are specialists in the same space, the same area. It's fun, though. Yeah. Have you, I mean, do you get feedback from, I mean, I, I guess you, I'm sure you do. I mean, people say, Hey, I like this or I didn't like this, or I mean, is there a, me is there a me mechanism by which people can leave either constructive or, you know, whatever. I mean, th th there's always people that complain about stuff, no matter what you do, but yeah. do you get much of that and how much of it has been actually helpful? We do get a lot of input. Um, and this year we'll be able to get the, get more input through the event app. Um, because there'll be questionnaires and surveys on the event app. I would say that at least 50% of it has been helpful. I mean, sometimes people just complain to complain. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah I've received sure. a lot of good ideas too. I mean, doing the carnivore panel last year was not my idea. Judy Cho came to me and she said, you know, the community is really clamoring for this. We need to put a carnivore panel into KetoCon. And that's what we did. Yeah, I, I definitely pay attention to suggestions. And now I've finally gotten to the point where I may get a little butt hurt, but if someone has, you know, criticism, I, I'm definitely open to it. That's the only way I'm going to get better. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, do you, so, I mean, you, you said like maybe, maybe sometime, maybe Austin doesn't make sense. Are you considering other locations where, I mean, St. Petersburg? I mean, is, I mean, obviously it'd be convenient for, it, I suppose, but. I mean, what are your, where are your thoughts on that? 
The only venue around here that can support this event is the Tampa Convention Center. And they're booked two years in advance. So I don't think I'd ever be in a position to bring it here. If I downsize the event, I could bring it to St. Pete. But um, I mean, this area is continuing to grow. So there's an opportunity to do it, you know, in the future. I don't want to go to California because it's too expensive. Although they have all kinds of venues to support something like this. The other place would be Chicago. They have plenty of venues to support something like this. Um, and I've kind of been gauging it based on the home base for the attendees. And I mean, up until last year, about 60% of our attendees were from the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll wait to see what happens this year for future planning. But right now, I mean, I think we're kind of like 50-50 right now from within the state of Texas and the rest from within. Yeah, you know, we've got a couple of people like, somebody making calls out for reno cats asking for reno nevada (laughs) i don't know i mean i know las vegas is like a huge convention but i mean they're they probably have i can't imagine the prices they charge to hold things there i imagine it's pretty high maybe not i don't know (laughs) i haven't been receiving any um criticism from the community as far as austin goes i did get a couple of emails last year about gosh i think it was the abortion issue I can't remember. I don't, but, I, don't remember that being, I don't remember that being a big part of keto con talking about abortion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't feel like it's the place of an event to be politically. Uh, I just don't feel it's my place yeah. as an event. I mean, I'm educating people on nutrition. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, whatever their political views are, are their own business. I just. Yeah. I'm, I'm similar in a way. I, I think, I think it'd be, I think, you know, if everybody had better nutrition, we would have a lot. We people would get along a lot better because we wouldn't have so many. I agree. We wouldn't have so many mentally ill people that are that are mentally ill partly because of their bad nutrition. I think so. so right. So yeah, we have some of that stuff. So anyway, the, the events. I can't remember that. It's like the what is it the eighteenth through the twenty first or what are the dates? You're going to be there, right? Yeah, yeah I'm going to be there, but I can't remember the dates. <laughs> I, just, I I, I got to go to Por- I'm going to Portugal for a week prior to going there, so I'm, I've got you know. Oh, that's right. right. Travel that's coming. right. Yeah. So. What, it's uh, um, the 21st to the 23rd. 21st to 30th, 23rd. Yeah, I got to get my tickets together for that. So, yeah, okay. And <laughs> and and what are the three days? Can you walk us through? Is there, is there different events on each day? There is so much to, I mean, you just have to look at the website to look at the schedule. Um, we have, we run a keynote stage, two breakout rooms and a VIP breakout room. And there is someone on any of those stages every hour for all three days the special sessions that are happening, there's panels every day. We're opening the show with panels every day. So on Friday, we open with a success stories panel. On Saturday, we open with um, the carnivore panel, the carnivore panel or the regenerative agriculture panel. And we open on Sunday with a panel as well. There's also an entrepreneur mastermind session on Saturday morning. And then there's all types of um, meet and greet sessions happening in the net. There's a networking lounge. So there's meet and greet and book signings and book giveaways happening. And then we have a podcast booth this month, this year. So they're um, scheduling podcasts. That's probably what you were referring to before. Uh, Hatterson Farms is sponsoring that podcast and they are um, scheduling sessions where they're going to be doing live podcasting there. And there's several others that are, that will be doing it as well. I'll tell you what, that, that's more than you can fit into a day with all the different speakers. And we have 84 vendors right now, we'll probably end up with close to 90. Wow. Um, and I mean, it's a lot to do. So I would say if you're coming, plan on spending all three days. <laughs> uh, where will parking be for those who drive in? There's a parking garage connected to um, the Palmer Event Center. And um, they do charge $10 a day. So I recommend not leaving several times during the day because they'll charge you every time you come back in. Um, but, and the, the parking garage is huge. I think it holds like 1,200 cars or more. Okay. Yeah, I've seen the part. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always, I think I take an Uber or something when I when I go there. So um, is there, do you guys have a hotel that you're affiliated with or anything like that? Do you guys ever do anything like that for, for discount rates or things like that? We do. Um, There are three properties on our website that we negotiated discount rate 
in blocks, but two of them are sold out. Um, and the one that's left is the Hyatt was the most expensive one. Um, but I think they still have a few more rooms left, but those blocks all close usually about four weeks before the event. Oh, wow. Well, I better go find a place to stay. <laughs> I'm, I'm always a last minute guy. Sometimes I'm literally getting off the plane and go, where am I going to stay tonight? And I go, I this. I literally, I've done that many times. There's this like website. It's like last minute hotel deal. And you, can get, you can sometimes get a good price because, you know, if it isn't sold, if it yeah. hasn't sold it, they drop the prices. So I've, I've done that many times. Just uh, Austin so, is a really great city for Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you if you go to Airbnb and type in um, the zip code for the Palmer Event Center, you'll find so many options you wouldn't believe. The last time I was there, I went for meetings in Austin and I found an Airbnb. It was a one bedroom condo that was six miles from the Palmer Center for a hundred dollars a night. Wow. That's, that's... It was real. And it was nice. It was very comfortable. I felt safe. I had my own kitchen, which is what I prefer. And it was great. It's yeah, a great city. Yeah, Airbnb. absolutely. Having your own kitchen, you know, like, like I said, when you can cook your own, like when I go on vacation, we more often than not do that. And we, you know, go to the store, buy a bunch of steak and eggs, load up the fr- fridge and, you know, start cooking, <laughs> right. you know, and it's, it saves you so much money on, on going out. Cause usually if you eat in restaurants, it's triple the price at least. And particularly if you're eating steak. So Lark to answer your question. Yes. You can have a big hug when, when I get to see you, I'll be happy to give you a big hug. So, <laughs> <laughs> and anybody else that's listening that happens to be there. I'm happy to do that. So. Um, anything else, Robin, we need to know we're, we, we've almost gone through an hour here. Um, I know this is a lot of stuff that, that you got going on and, and, I, and thank, and again, once again, thanks for doing it and thanks for inviting me. I always have fun when I go down to these things. Um, Carny, keto. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there That's was, a there, there was a carnivory con that was done several years ago. I've got him, Amber O'Hearn. I don't yeah. know if you know Amber or not. She put one on Amber O'Hearn there. did yeah, that. Back in 2018 yeah. in Boulder. And it was a lot of fun. She had some, I will tell you, she, she put on a heck of a sp- I mean, all the food was catered was, uh, it was, she knocked it out of the park. It was just a bunch of, you know, I was probably the big, I think she said that was the biggest expense of the whole conference was, was the food because she, you know, went, went all over, over the top with that. But uh, yeah, cause I went to, uh, and, and Jeff put on a great conference in Denver, but they had a VIP dinner and I went there and it was like, you know, like a six ounce steak, which is fine. But I looked, but I was like, this is the only meal I'm having today. And I had six ounce steak ain't doing it for me. So I ate that. Right. Then I had to leave and go to another place, to another place to get <laughs> to a barbecue place to eat the rest of the food. And it was kind of funny. But, um, but anyway, yeah. Anything else you want to share with people about this conference before we go? No, not really. I think that what I would really like to say is thank you for all the work that you're doing to help educate the community. The work that you're doing is beyond admirable. Uh, and I know it takes a lot of your time and I know you're very passionate about it, but you're making a, a huge difference in a lot of people's lives. And I, for one, appreciate having you as a resource for information that I can trust. And if I feel that way, I know that others feel that way as well. Well, well thank you for that. And, and yeah, I mean, it's kind of my full time job at this point. I mean, I'm constantly just trying to get information out there. And, you know, like I said, uh, this is this is a grassroots movement and, you know, it, it takes me and 50,000 other people, I mean, eventually to, to make a difference, but it's, it's a fight worth having, obviously, because I mean, it's, you know, we, we cannot go on as a society as we're going. I mean, it's, you're just seeing it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's gotta be a tipping point. So anyway, well, thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. Do you have a social media outside of KetoCon and you want to share? Do you do a lot of social media stuff or is it all, or not that's worth, not that's okay. worth following unless you okay. want to see pictures of my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. What about Keto? Does KetoCon have social media? I'm sure they do. I know they do. I think what, what, yeah, where, where, um, do we, where do we go? Where do we go to find out information about this stuff? Um, on Facebook, it's KetoCon ATX. Mm-hmm. On Instagram, it's at KetoCon. We have a YouTube channel, KetoCon, um, where you can find all the videos from 2017, 18, and 19, in addition to the online videos from 2020 and some of the interviews that we've been doing this year. Um, those are all posted to our, our YouTube channel. We're not active on LinkedIn or Twitter. And I myself personally, uh, if you want to see pictures of my granddaughter, um, I'm on Instagram at the Robin Switzer. I'm not there very often, to be honest with you, but I love to connect to people. And if you'd like to email me, feel free. I'll type in my email. Uh, Love to connect with you. Happy to answer any of your questions about the event or about anything. Perfect. Well, thank you, Rob. Thanks for doing that. Sure. Um, And yeah, yeah, you know, you've got all that keto con social media. So when you, when it comes, comes change time for name change, yeah, we're going to have to do some 
you know, education so people know how to find it. So it'll be interesting. Maybe yeah, it'll be, exactly. Like sometimes you'll like, you can just have it, you know, you can type in the website and it'll redirect you to the new one or something like that. So maybe mm-hmm. it'll help. So anyway. All right. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you in a little over a month. So awesome. Or actually, yes. I guess it's, it's less than a month. Yeah, I guess we're, we're 21st. So I'll see you. It's in a, month. a month. Yeah, it's a month today. I'll see you in a month. All right. Thanks, Robin. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. you guys Bye, have everybody. Have a great, everybody. Bye, have a great afternoon. Bye bye. Bye.